and A with Jazzy B. Let's get into it. So I put a poll up on my Instagram for some questions. I've done a Q&A once before and I did that with my mum. If you haven't checked it out, I'll put the link above. And also as well, excuse the lighting situation. So it is a nice sunny evening in the UK and I'm going to make full use of the UK's natural ring light and that is sun. Wherever the sun is, you will find me putting my face there with SPF on because it is the best ring light. Question time. Question number one. I think this one is quite obvious. If you know me anyway, do you have any brothers or sisters? No, no, I do not. I am an only child. And the funny thing is I've picked a partner who is one of nine and to say that we have differences is an understatement. But somehow it works, so I'm fine with it. I also think we've definitely taught each other a lot. So my partner's very kind, giving, sharing, as you can imagine, being one of nine. Whereas me, on the other hand, I am caring and I am sharing, but if it's chocolate, no, I don't share. When I was younger, I actually used to think that it was called lonely child. So I would go to school and the teachers would go, oh, do you have any brothers or sisters? And I'd turn around and go, no, I'm a lonely child. I'd call it lonely child. <laughs> they must have thought, right, call in the NSPCC. But I've loved growing up an only child. And I think it's probably one of the reasons why I am so close with my mum, which leads me on to my next question, actually. Someone's put, I love the relationship that you have with your mum. Have you always been this close? I have been like my mum's best friend ever since I was born. She is and will forever be my best friend. Even when I was younger, I remember I would follow my mum round like a little sheep to a point that she'd call me her shadow. Yeah, I have always been this close and I will continue to be close with my mum. Some people might think, oh, you need to cut the apron strings now, but never ever gonna happen. I adore my mum to bits and that's the way it's gonna stay forever. Next question. So someone's asked how to stay in a deficit or how to make staying in a deficit more manageable. Being in a deficit doesn't mean you have to completely cut out carbs or cut out fats. That's one of the biggest things that people muck up on is the fact that they will just cut everything out. There is no need to cut out carbs or fats. Keep all your food groups in so then it's going to feel like you're eating your diet but just less of it. And high volume foods are a big trick so you want foods that make your plate look really full and that you feel satiated after you've eaten them but they're low in calories. Another thing people struggle with is sweet cravings. If you're craving sweet stuff, there is a massive range of sugar-free biscuits, which are less calories. Sugar-free jelly, I know people have when they're competing. Okay, someone's put, dog or a cat person? I'm sorry if you can hear my bird. He's a little bit agitated that I've had to put both my dog and my bird out on the balcony, but they'll be fine. The bird's too noisy. I'm a cat person through and through. I love all animals and I would never wish any harm on any animal and I do love my dog but I am a cat person to a point that I've already decided when I retire I want to run either a cat hotel, just something to do with cats. I'm going to rescue loads of cats. I want to build a nice cattery where they feel at home. I'll sleep there at night if I have to just to make them feel at home. And my parents split up the first thing we did is we got cats in my dad didn't really like cats and me and mum always wanted a cat but the minute my parents got divorced we got cats in not one we got two cats in and it was the best thing ever next question what did you want to be as a child this is going to shock a lot of people so when i was younger i really wanted to be a farmer until I realised that being a farmer meant you had to kill the animals. And I remember having a conversation with my dad and I said, yeah, but I'll just be a nice farmer. I will grow some crops and I'll just use chickens for eggs. I said, I won't kill, um, I won't kill any animals, I went. And he went, yeah, but you're not gonna make much money. So yeah, I wanted to be a farmer and then 
The next thing I went on to be was a vet. And having taken my dog to the vets today, she had her anal glands done. And I am so glad I didn't go down that route because I was nearly gagging in that room. I'm very funny about smells and yeah, that wasn't fun. I nearly had to walk out the room. Yes, I'm so glad we went down the career path that I have done. <laughs> My next question, what is your favorite book? I will only ever read self-help books or some books that I can gain something from because if I wanted to read a fiction book, I would rather see it visually and watch it on this mahoosive screen that my partner brought in that actually swamps our flat. The books that have changed my mindset the most are definitely The 5am Club. I always rave about this book. That was the book that got me up early in the morning. I used to think getting up at 7am was early until I read that book and that changed my whole mindset and that is the book. Other books I like reading are Atomic Habits, insane amazing book i think it's so easy to get overwhelmed in this day with everything that we should be doing and where we should be in life and that book really teaches you just to narrow down your focus on really tiny tasks that often we'd overlook and it's such a good theory that you can apply to pretty much any area in your life including fitness there are so many things that you might get tasked with doing every day to reach your goals such as drinking your two litres of water, such as getting your steps in, such as getting your workouts done, that you can often overlook. But if you really focus on those tiny things that are actually building the bigger picture, that's the game changer. That was a really good book. I enjoyed that a lot. And I recommend it to all my clients to read as well. So I've actually missed off a question. And the question was, what makes you angry? Yeah, there are quite a few things that make me angry actually. Men full stop sexism of any kind i won't tolerate that not even jokes not happening and the other thing that really gets to me is any form of animal cruelty or cruelty against vulnerable people so whether it be children whether it be the elderly my biggest thing is animals like i hate to see like god forbid i ever see in person someone being cruel to animals because I know I would lose it. You can tell so much about a person based on how they treat animals and how they treat the elderly and like the most vulnerable of our population. And I stand by that. If someone hates animals, I hate them automatically. Let me know in the comments below what other videos you'd like to see. If you want me to get my mum back on the channel as well. We could do another Q and A part two. And that is the end of this video. I'm now gonna go and get my furry kids in because they're probably getting a bit agitated out there.